Hi, welcome to Desi Plaza. This is Madhav. So today I do have uh, with me uh, Mr. Vijay, who is actually the owner of or the founder member of Geo Spell Academy, which trains young kids for all the spelling bee championship. So hi Vijay, how are you? Good. How are you? So I'm I'm good, Vijay. First of all. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having us. And second thing, congrats uh, because uh, all the three champions for the Scripps National uh, B, they, they are from your academy, right? Yes. So how does it feel? Really good. Uh, we are uh, very uh, happy, obviously, and honored and humbled as well. It's uh, one of those things that, you know, you, you don't plan for it. Uh, we are glad that we have such champion kids who are working hard and uh, achieving such success. So we are definitely honored. So Vijay, I mean, what, what's actually your profession? Is this the Geospell Academy is the primary or? Uh, well, uh, I, I come from IT background. Uh -huh. I have a master's in computer science and later got an MBA. I work for, uh, like many uh, IT professionals, I work for IBM Sprint and MCI in the 90s and later went out and started my own uh, couple of other IT software companies like uh, IPillion and Inventex. Then uh, around 2009 time frame, um, after we sold our uh, second company, Inventex, my son was getting in, into this competition, so I tried to take some time and started helping him out. And that eventually became Geospell Academy once he, he was done competing. Right now I have two ventures. One is Geospell Academy and the other is Victory Line Partners, which is like a hedge fund. Uh, we help investors uh, grow their, uh, you know, savings by investing wisely in public stocks. So, and what's, what's the idea behind uh, Geospell Academy? Yes. Uh, what, what's the idea behind? The idea was, as I said, like uh, our son, uh, when he started competing at the uh, second grade, third grade level. He was winning the local championships and uh, his uh, goal was to get to the nationals, Scripps nationals. So I took six months off in between the, my com second and third company and started helping him. At that time I realized that the material that was needed to do well in this was not available. The dictionary was there but it wasn't easily, you know, you can't study from that easily. So we started capturing the key specific spelling bee caliber words and uh, tried to make it easy to study faster and more effective way of studying. And that helped him. Mm -hmm. And later we thought we can help other kids with that. Okay, so you you used, I mean, like, so initially when you started this, you started it as a, on a helpful note and then expanded it as a business or? Uh, yes, uh, well, as a, again, and After our son was done competing, some friends, family, neighbors, some folks were approached us and said, hey, you know, can you give us some tips or tips guidance up. and all that. So one thing led to another and uh, then people Good. started mm -hmm. sending their kids to our home for training, coaching, so like that, tutoring. So that gave you an idea. Then we said, like, why don't we take a place? Then we started converting our content into uh, books and software. And now you have... Uh, I don't think, you don't even remember how many champions you have, right? <laughs> uh, champions at the national level, we have obviously two, Karthik uh, this year and uh, Ananya Vinay last year. Uh -huh. But uh, we had, uh, in the top 12, we had four in the last three years. Uh -huh. Every year we had at least four in the top 12. And um, that we are very proud of. We have sent at least 30 students to the nationals in the last five years, uh, apart from my son. Can you tell me more about the Geo Spell Academy? Like, it's it's only uh, spelling bee, or other than spelling bee, is there any other uh, trainings right. in other in other fields that you offer? Right. So, spelling bee is our primary thing. That's what got us into this space. Uh, once we took a center, we felt like, you know, Spelling Bee is a niche product, not every student uh, goes for it, right? So we thought we'll offer others like math and uh, regular English, uh, STAR testing, as well as SAT, ACT. So we pride ourselves in helping students in any test and competition, as long as it is math and English. Okay. So, and most competitions, most tests are math and English. So we do both. So 
you have courses only planned for kids or is there are there any courses for any adults or uh, youth uh, honestly we haven't had uh, any plans or courses for adults per se but i did have a couple of college level students who wanted help with gre and gmat okay so because again once again they are both that's not a part math, of your math curriculum. and ma math and english oh that's a part of your curriculum N not really it is more of a one to one on a one on one uh, basis and when you at what what is the initial first age uh, that a kid should start to prepare for a geo uh, spelling. spelling bee uh, ideal age i think is probably around 7 years or so but we had uh, students who are like ge literally geniuses uh, child prodigies we have one right now who is four and a half years and uh, he got a third place in one of the local uh, competitions is amazing uh, we have kids who join at kindergarten first grade as well uh, but i think seven, uh, second third grade is ideal but we also have students who come in late and did really well like fourth fifth sixth grades so it all uh, it all depends a on specific age uh, not a different. very specific age but if they are reading well and if they are uh, passionate about competing and you know studying committing their one or two hours a day every literally every day i think those are kids who will do very well in the long run so, and and what, do you have a, when you say do you have a process or any program uh, when you any levels that are uh, involved when you train these kids are there any different levels? Yes, of course. Um, you know, we have the novice level, the beginners, absolute. You know, they don't know anything about spelling bee. They mm -hmm. come in and they want to know what is spelling bee, what are competitions, how do you prepare. So we start with teaching them the pronunciation keys and, you know, the root words, the synonyms, antonyms, homonyms, uh, the prefixes, suffixes, the combining form, everything all, all along. Then there are champion kids who like for example Karthik just joined uh, last year he mostly uh, rather than say join he they got our uh, study materials and we may have uh, you know guided him a little bit whenever we had a chance to meet talk about it so for him we don't need to go through the basics he's mm -hmm. already been competing for uh, you know at other levels so there your approach is very different uh, so we, we have every level, uh, all the way from uh, rank beginners to national level champions. And if I'm not wrong, I, when I'm like, uh, I remember him, tell, uh, his father telling like, he actually is not from Texas, right? So it's it's uh, from Bloomington and yeah. he did not have resources and he made a move to Texas uh, for resources and yes. that's when that's how we, they yes, met you. Yes, thankfully for us, absolutely. Uh, they are from Bloomington, uh, Illinois, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, they moved about a year and a half ago and um, they, d they do say that they came here primarily for, uh, you know, spelling bee uh, and uh, we are happy they did, obviously, and uh, we are very glad to have him. Yeah. And so, uh, you, you, just as you told, you, your academy has peop uh, the kids of different age groups, so how do you actually uh, divide them or categorize them based on uh, age groups or uh, no, IQ ability, levels? ability levels. IQ. So, uh, uh, not uh, IQ, but uh, their ability, some of them are like sec second grade, third mm. grade, but they are already worked on 30,000 words sometimes. So you can't keep them with, and some of them are fourth, fifth graders who are just beginning. So y you have to you know, so you do you them. do have different sections wherein uh, yes we do so the they are beginner level the intermediate the advanced level kids they are all seated kind of separately. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to ask you is just in uh, as technology grew like people mm -hmm. are uh, they are lazy to remember spellings right the moment you want to type something it it pops up right. so how to avoid this stuff so is there anything uh, specific that people should concentrate on so that they keep remembering the words <laughs> that's a good word <laughs> because the the moment the laziness grows right. now right now if you'll ask me some spelling i need to uh, though it's very easy to be frank enough i should not admit in front of camp but it takes time yeah 
I think uh, there are obviously uh, tips and tricks uh, the students uh, follow, especially knowing the word by the roots. Uh, you know, almost 70% of the English language words are from Greek and Latin. And the Greek and Latin taxonomy is primarily based on a prefix and a suffix with a combining form in the middle. And if you know 100 prefixes and 100 suffixes, what they mean, you can literally make up almost 10,000 But words. you accept that technology has spoiled everyone <laughs> well, in one way or the other. Yes, uh, but at the same time, you can apply that same theory to almost anything, anything else. Like, right. you know, did calculators spoil people's math, math brains or did cars spoil people's ability to run or It jog? at least increased the laziness, that's right. Uh, yeah. Right, so in each case, there is obviously, but it's best to rather than worry about technology, I think it's best to adapt to the changes, to the changes as so. you go along. Yeah. But spelling bee has a lot of advantages inherently compared to any other competition. It is the only subject that addresses literally every other subject. Hmm. So the words that you will eventually learn in physics, chemistry, math, biology, law, medicine, all of them, these kids are already studying at a very young age. Right. So their, their understanding of subjects is like incredibly high. Hmm. And yeah, because uh, I remember learning them when I had to write my GRE or TOEFL, right. which was, uh, and now these kids, they are just 14 and uh, 4, 14, I mean, like, and yeah. they, they, they have excelled in it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, GRE, I bet you studied, what, 3,000 words or something. Yeah, and that too, very minimal uh, exactly. amount of words. I did that too, back in, you know, uh, early 90s. And the thing is, a typical adult uh, who has a master's degree or a PhD who has gone through a GRE, GMAT or whatever, their vocabulary is about twelve to 18,000 words, right? Uh, you know, students like Karthik or Naisa or Abhijay, they are working on 120,000 words. You, you, you cannot even you imagine can, you, the comprehension. compare. Exactly. And uh, we have students who are like second, third, fourth grade who are working on thirty to 60,000 words. Hmm. So th th their ability to understand some of these are uh, far beyond a master's or a PhD graduate. So it, it is something that is incomparable to any other competition out there. And I wanted to ask this actually to Karthik, uh, but you, since you are uh, a teacher, I want to ask you like Texas, uh, I've seen almost all the champions, are, there are many champions from te Texas. So what actually do you think made Texas uh, a competitive uh, city? Uh, I'm sorry, state. Right, right. I sorry. think one is obviously, uh, you know, for any, any competition, right, typically you need a strong ecosystem of good students, very supportive parents, and maybe uh, coaches who are, uh, you know, guiding them in the right way. In that context, I think uh, last few years, Texas, especially both Dallas and Houston, Dallas, yeah. have uh, done really well. And uh, let's see if, you know, uh, you, you never know, obviously, in the future how things go. But we are confident that next couple, two, three, four years, there are some good spellers from Texas or Dallas. <laughs> Dallas. Yeah. And, and this this year, around September month, uh, you do have uh, Olympiad planned with yes. in association with Desi Plaza. Yes. So what, what's the idea behind it? So last year uh, was our first time we did uh, Geospell Academic Olympiad. Uh, the goal is to pro uh, you know provide a platform for our uh, students across US, in fact. And people, folks are in, you know, we invite them from all across and all communities. So there are other competitions which probably only cater to only Indians or only South Asians or something. But we welcome students across all communities. And uh, our goal is to promote and provide a platform for students to, you know, compete with each other and uh, use this to ha propel themselves into something much bigger and better beyond just Geospell. And in that context, uh, last year we worked with Desi Plaza, they provided us uh, the audio, video coverage, uh, media coverage. We were very happy with them for that. And this year, again, we are partnering with them. Um, so, and uh, we have uh, got UT Dallas as a venue on September 9th on uh, Sunday. 
uh, all day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We will be there. And uh, so, I mean, like, it's what all. Uh, so, do you have a program that you want to uh, you can share with us? I mean, like, it's only spelling or other math and uh, no, it, it does it, have it has ten, 10 competitions. Uh, so, we do spelling bees or signature event that will be our mm -hmm. main event that uh, showstopper at the end, if you know, if you can say that. Mm -hmm. But we have math, science, uh, vocabulary, geography, uh, I think te uh, quizzes in technology, writing like grammar and punctuation and stuff. So, uh, logical reasoning, it, it's 10. So, it's, it's, it's an Olympiad of different uh, Exactly. Genres, yeah. we, we kept it as, we initially thought of calling it decathlon, but with 10 events, but Olympiad sounded, sounded yeah, good. much okay. better. And uh, so, it is going to be fun. Um, yeah, it's all the, all the 10 subjects, it's primarily written, except spelling bee, which is, going to be a verbal, you know, hmm. a single elimination format. Okay. And uh, I mean, like, how often do you organize these Olympiads? It'll be once in a year? Once a year is uh, what we have done so far. Uh, but, you know, if, we, if there is an opportunity down the road, not, we'll continue the same Olympiad once a year. But there may be other uh, competitions, like we were, I was talking to Manohar with our Desi Plaza. We may do something else uh, in for high school kids. Th this Olympiad is only for K to eight. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. for high schoolers who are preparing for SAT, ACT, PSAT, mm -hmm. other uh, such competitions, we may do something for them uh, around November, December time frame. And coming back to the GSPL Academy, sure. so there's a common notion like whatever material you want to prepare, say spelling bee or Olympiad math or something. You find everything in Google or YouTube. Yes. So, what actually makes your uh, Geospell Academy? Uh, I mean, like, what actually makes people to go for Geospell Academy to take a regular course? Right. I think that's a very valid question. Um, you know, the all the words will come from Merriam-Webster's third unabridged dictionary. That's like the Bible for this competition. Mm -hmm. There are about close to half a million entries in that. Um, People can buy that for about $100, $120, study from that, mm -hmm. and you master that, you win, period, right? Mm -hmm. But when we did that, when we got the first dictionary, it, it is like near impossible to study from that. Mm -hmm. it, it has like very small print, uh, almost 3,000 pages, and uh, it's, uh, you don't need to study all those entries because many of the words will never come there are idioms and phrases. So we had to filter that 500 down to close to 120,000 B caliber words. And okay. then once we filtered that out, now how do you take those words and you need pronunciation keys for that because you need to know how they sound. That's the first thing you hear on stage, the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then from that pronunciation keys, you then you go into the part of speech, the language of origin, the definitions and all that you extract all of that, now you have some content. Now you try to present it in such a way that kids can, it, it is, you know, they can, uh, rather than do 50 words an hour, you can do 500 words an hour. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? How do you make it very effective? Because every student has only one or two hours to study in a day. So how can you help your students get that edge? In, so so in, in, in presenting all that, is what we do. You do. So okay. that's that's what our students. So get. do you have any online courses also available uh, for or, or it's only we have has to be face -to -face? we have online. Mm -hmm. uh, it is actually like a um, test and uh, learn and test and review tools. Okay. So we have uh, like you know on online when they go to our website and click on tests, mm -hmm. they can uh, click on you know the word comes up the sound and the pronunciation key, again, the definition part of speech, language of origin. Then the student has to type the word. Okay. And uh, then the next and the next. And when they are done, they click complete and they get a report of what words they got right, what words right. they missed. And it also breaks it down by the language of origin. You know, So it, it so, will so be easier to go back. And yeah, repeat. the reason I actually asked uh, this question was, uh, so people who are 
away and who do not have resources, yes. they can again Absolutely. Uh, go we, through we the We do have a lot of remote students. In fact, um, you know, some of our uh, top mm -hmm. students, they are not local in the last few years. Okay. So they are, uh, you know, from Florida or California or, you know, Illinois. In fact, this year, the number four, um, Jashan Paluru, mm -hmm. he is from uh, Indianapolis. So your training centers, where are it, uh, where are they located in? Right now, in just uh, the actual physical one is just Dallas. It's in. Uh, but we are kind of migrating from that as well, only into the more mm -hmm. of uh, the content model, which is the software and the books. We have quite a few books on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So other than uh, this uh, training for uh, kids, so do you also offer any certification program for people who want to set up a training center like this? Uh, we are working, there is some interest in like some folks asking us uh, if they can franchise model or license model and uh, I am seeking some professional uh, help on that side who are guiding me. So hopefully something will work out soon and we'll come up with a plan on that. So finally, before we conclude this, so do you want to share any views to our audience so that they can start thinking out of box? On uh, the spelling bees? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I would say, uh, you know, anyone, uh, any, any of the kids out there, younger ones who uh, like watching Spelling Bees or who love reading and, you know, learning, I, I would strongly encourage you to uh, taking up competing at any level. And, uh, you know, whether it is classroom, school, district, or even uh, other uh, competitions out there, please go ahead and take it up as a challenge and you will enjoy the ride uh, thoroughly and ultimate reward is the knowledge you gain from it and uh, if you need any assistance uh, feel free to uh, you know call us or uh, text us or email us at vijay at geospell.com or visit our website geospell.com um, we'll be more than happy to guide you through the process so thank you vijay really Th thank you pleasure so much having you over here. It. thanks so that's it from uh, desi plaza studio next time i'll, I'll be again with a great personality. Till then, signing off, Madhav. Cheers.